Good morning everybody or whatever salutation from whichever time zone you're in. Um, I was asked to make a tutorial for um, some fabric sort of rosettes that uh, I had on the front of one of my last journals. So I thought I'd put a quick tutorial together because I cannot remember where I saw how to do it but it was a while ago. Um, so I'll be using these um, frayed edge ribbon fabric I don't know crap <laughs> call it whatever you like um today's one of those days where I'm forgetting just about everything it's a wonder I can even remember my own name or how to film a video so please bear with me uh, you'll need some nice sharp scissors for this one um some glue which I'll get to in a second um, and you're going to need a base to put your rosette onto um, you can use uh, hessian or another kind of heavy fabric you can use basic cardstock but just make sure it's not too flimsy um, or of course you can just use like scrap cardboard this was from like an amazon envelope or something so it doesn't matter as long as it can just withstand what you're going to be doing um, so i'll be just putting it onto a little um hessian circle today so normally i would use fabric glue for this um because i find it more flexible than hot glue um but for the sake of speed and not having to do the here's one i made earlier thing i'm gonna uh, i'm just gonna use hot glue so the the smaller your um base the less length you're gonna need of your uh, fabric obviously you can you can use really thick ribbon uh, for this or any fabric that you want really this is just a really nice light fabric that I like to make them for for the covers of journals and things like that so for the again for the sake of making it a quick tutorial I'm just going to make a small one for you today so the first thing to do is to cut your fabric remember there's something else um you can prepare this in really long lengths if you wanted to so that you've always got some to hand and then you can just cut the size of the base you want uh, because when we get to the end of this you trim off anything that's left over anyway so the first step is to uh, apply your glue and you want to keep it as close to the edge as you can obviously on frayed fabrics you do need to go just a little bit further in just in case your glue misses and you end up with a big gloopy mess which is always fun unless it's a Thursday now obviously if you're using fabric glue just uh, go ahead put that along and um, leave it to dry for a minute before you move on to the next step if you're hot gluing um, just remember to do it a little bit at a time because otherwise your glue will dry before you've had chance to get the fabric down or at least that's what happens to me anyway maybe glue just actually glue does hate me I'm terrible I stick my fingers together on a pretty much a daily basis um, or things together that I really don't want to be stuck together so tell me I'm not alone in this guys <laughs> leave me a comment if you're the kind of person who just randomly glues everything together unexpectedly okay so now you should have that all glued down um the reason i prefer to use fabric glue is because um hot glue you get this kind of rigidity to it and you need it to to bend really really well so i do strongly suggest using fabric glue when you actually come to do this now your next step is to get some scissors and what you need to do is cut almost all the way to your glue now you can make these as big or small widthways as you want to uh, you can vary them you, you really don't have to be too precise with this because it really is kind of a, a shabby chic kind of look anyway so you know it doesn't need to be completely uniform so just Get yourself all nice and happy with that and just get cutting. Okay, so you should now have what looks like this. 
See, it really is quite easy so far, isn't it? And it doesn't get any harder. <laughs> okay, so now you're going to need your glue again. Um, and you're going to get just a bit of glue on the outside edge there. Take one end and just press it down. And here I go again, gluing my fingers together. <laughs> and you're just going to basically follow that around all the way having this outside layer close to the edge. So once you get all the way around, you're just going to spiral it. So now you've come all the way around the outside edge. So now you just start gluing below the line of the last go round. And just kind of feed that round like that. I have a very cre creaky glue gun today. I think it's complaining because I'm making it work. Okay, so now you're just going to carry on doing that all the way until you get to the middle. So once you're almost at the middle, I couldn't have actually tried to get the length of this better if I tried. <laughs> um, so I'm not actually going to have any excess to cut off. But if once you get to the middle, you've got a lot of excess, then just cut it off and leave just enough to pop that bit of glue in the middle. And then just tuck that round in on itself. So you're kind of taking that end and you're just twisting it in and then just push that down to glue it. And again sticking my fingers together and the beauty of this is being it's shabby chic is all those glue gossamers that you get all over the place well you can just say it's all part of the charm <laughs> okay so there if i just unglue my fingers please excuse me for a minute and i'm just going to turn that off because otherwise it just leaks glue everywhere um so that's what you're left with now it should look like that uh you can now kind of so one of the things i did with the covers that i had being that this is all like pre-frayed it does also fray really really easily so i just kind of rub it and pull at it until little bits of it start to stick up and just add to that kind of shabby look to it but you don't have to do that and it will probably depend on which fabric you use as to whether or not it will do that easily um and then when you're happy with how it's looking, you can just add uh, something in the middle here. Um, I'll probably, for the purposes of this one, I will probably just kind of put a button in the middle or something of this one. Um, but I've put all manner of really cute things in there. I've, um, I've used these in the middle before. Um, and these are really, really good. Uh, you can just kind of snap those off. Um, if you've used hot glue, obviously it's going to be difficult to try to get through it. But if you snap those off, you can glue something like that in there. And that looks really, really nice. If I'm going to use a button, what I tend to do is I'll sew through the holes in the button without it being attached to anything and tie off the cotton so it looks like it's sewn on, um, even though it's not. And then just glue that in the middle and then you can stick that on your cards your journal covers um pretty much anything you like really but they're just a really nice easy little addition and i think they really add to the, the kind of overall look of the, the shabby chic and the vintage kind of stuff so i'll be putting this one on the new vintage um commission journal that i'm doing at the moment so that should be quite nice up there in the corner i hope that's been useful to you um and obviously i always say if you've got any questions do feel free to ask i never mind answering questions and i'll help if i can if anything's not clear just let me know um and if you'd like to subscribe i will be posting more tutorials on a regular basis for things to do with junk journals so i hope you enjoyed that bye Thank you.